Hello, Internet people. Welcome to a special coming of age episode of the Creative Differences podcast. I'm Dallas, and I'm glad I did not grow up in the 80s. I'm Colin, and yeah, I yeah, that just sounds like it would have been a less good time. Like growing up now wouldn't be great. I don't think growing up at any time was good, but <laughs> I'll take the 90s and early 2000s over the 80s, yeah. And I'm Demi, and I love 80s movies. Welcome to our FanCast Friday, where we will be doing a FanCast of The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Yes, The Breakfast Club from 1985, when times were different. Before we dive into the 80s, please like and subscribe, because it helps us, you know, let more people see this. And that's what we're doing this for. Also each other, and for fun. Shout out to Rain Gun on YouTube for the suggestion that we fancast The Breakfast Club, because that was not on our list, but it's a pretty dope idea. I should start by giving off the rules. There are no rules for this fancast. You guys are free to cast whoever you want. I, yeah. I should start giving age rules, I guess, for stuff like this, but you should I mean, I don't just... know if you need to, because we kind of all think along those same lines anyway. We do until we have a when Harry met Sally situation where all of Gabby's actors were like 40, 50 years old. Oh, I mean, yeah, but I'm not going to question Gabby on when Harry met Sally. Yeah, she wants to reimagine everybody as old. That's fine. (laughs) Fair. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple, that's great. But go to YouTube because Demi has inserted pictures of the characters and the actors and you'll know who we're talking about if you can see them on your screen because it helps to see things. Visual learning. This is a school movie. All right. <laughs> we just getting into it? Yeah, let's let's dive on into this. We're going to start off with our first character, Claire Standish, the princess, who is concerned with how she appears to others, whether it be her looks, social circle, or sexuality, though her own popularity disgusts her. Dallas, you first, as always. Yes, as always. I have two because... How I'll, dare you? I'll get into that. But yes, if you guys know anything about me, you know I know about five or six teenage actors so sophia lillis <laughs> is claire because of is course she, she is from that show that i watched like an episode and a half of and got bored of uh i am not okay with this she's on that show but she's from it mm. well, it I is mean, where yeah like that that came first is what i mean so is that yeah but how does it matter which anyway doesn't matter keep going <laughs> no but yeah she's on that show she's a great actress she like, if you look at her, look at the picture that Demi put on the screen when I said the name. She looks like the princess. Like, she's redhead, white girl, teenager. Boom. Easy. And I always say this every time I bring her up. She's a fantastic actress. Watch It, Chapter 1 and 2, if you don't know that already. And I wanted to do a second Claire because I looked at my cast and it was too white. So, Claire number two is Yara Shahidi. Hey, that's a nice one. Thank you. And I picked Yara because she has prom queen energy, if anyone does. (laughs) She totally does. She could definitely pull off that prom queen look. But like in the way that it's not the 80s movie archetypal, like I can't be seen with you because my friends will laugh at me, prom queen, like the more modern, like Liz from Homecoming. Okay. Like that kind of like, I'm popular, but I'm not mean to the nerd. I don't know, man. Liz was popular at a science magnet. They were all nerds. Look, man, I'm working with a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what you're saying. But yeah, those are my two clips. Yara does have princess energy. Um, I'm taking this based off of watching her on Grownish and somewhat on Blackish. She may not be like the rich kid, but she is from a particularly well off family and she is kind of uppity, I will say. Interesting choice of words. Is what? uppity? Like, is it? <laughs> Is that, can you use that in a positive context anymore? Because I just assume it's. I don't think it's ever used in the positive context. I mean, I wouldn't say that Claire being the princess is in a positive context either. True. I mean, Demi can call somebody uppity. All right. That's, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Like, (laughs) the cast of this movie can't call us uppity. Oh. That would be problematic. (laughs) Yeah. The only white person who can call a person of color uppity is Miles from Blind Spot. <laughs> <laughs> she uppity. She up. Uh, like, I was not even mad. It was just hilarious. Oh man. Anyway, that's terrible. Colin, me. Who's your princess? My Claire Princess Standish, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> I like that. Is... That's nice. 
Uh, Lily Reinhardt. Because, yeah. That's not where I thought you were going when you said you went for Riverdale. But actually, she also is a really good choice. I just, you know, she has the, the energy of, like, the popular girl because she's done that on Riverdale. So, like, I know she can do it. Question. I honestly okay. What's thought up, you were, Yeah. Is she the one that kept throwing up in Hustlers? Yes. Okay. I thought you were going to go with Madeline Pesh. See, I thought about that, but I feel like I think of her first when I think of Riverdale, and it's like, she's great, but I can't always choose her in everything because she chooses scenery like she's dying of hunger. Exactly. Nah, nah, I got to give somebody else a shot. Lily Reinhardt, though, is a fantastic actress. I, Even though we gave up Riverdale a while ago, I always thought that she did a great job as Betty. Yeah, she was really good. And I loved her in Hustlers. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I basically feel like I've seen her play this character or a version close enough to it that I know she can do this. So, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I guess that means it's my turn. Uh, my choice is Sarah Jeffrey, who is most well known for CW's Charmed or Disney's Descendants. Yeah, in which she actually played a princess. So you know, is hey. she which one is she in Descendants? She is Audrey, who is the daughter of Princess Aurora. She has the Queen of Mean song. Yes. Oh yeah, that was good. Fire. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> song is this song is fire. It didn't need to slap that hard. This is a Disney Channel movie. I was gonna ask how you knew Descendants, Dallas, but then I remembered that you have a niece. I do. I do have a niece. Also. Yeah, and you cosplayed as um, Facilier with her, didn't you? No, we were going to, but then we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that that saddens me to no end, actually. To no end. Look what you did, Dallas. To no end. And anyway, Sarah Jeffrey, though, um, I've really enjoyed her on a lot of the things that I've seen her in, which is more than just those two things. I think she was on a show called Shades of Blue, where she played J-Lo's daughter. That's interesting, because Sarah, you said Sarah Jeffries is her name? Yeah. I feel like she's one of those people that, like, you can make her a character of any race and people will be like, I think they got that right. She's ambiguous enough, yeah. Yeah, but like, she is. For those who don't know, she is half black. She is black, so yeah. I realized that while watching one of the Descendants movies. Oh, this girl is black. <laughs> yes, she is. Yeah, I just I really love watching her play these characters. I've seen her do enough of the princess archetype, like within the princess archetype, that I'm like, I know she can do it. On Charmed, she kind of fits into that a little bit. First season, she's very much about her image and trying to get into this sorority and the college that she's at. And I feel like that really fits for Claire. And she's had some really great emotional moments on Charmed, specifically in season two. Um, There's a scene where she finds out that she's had like anxiety her entire life and using magic they repressed the memory to make sure that she never had to to have it triggered ever and then it got triggered again yo can i have that life (laughs) you're like this is what i want to use magic for absolutely absolutely yeah but she's really great on that show she's good in shades of blue whenever she would pop on because i mean the show is about her mom not about her and she was great in descendants especially descendants 3 when they actually gave her something to do because she was the villain so she's really good. Why is it called Shades of Blue? Is it a cop show? Yeah, it's a cop show. Her mom is a a, a crooked cop. J Lo playing a cop. J Lo was playing a crooked cop, and Ray Liotta was like her boss or something that she was doing crooked cop work with. And then like the internal affairs catch her, and they're like, "Well, now you're going to do work for us." And so she has to. She spends the whole show trying to make sure that they don't find out that she's working with IA. But yeah, Sarah Jeffrey, she's great. She's awesome. And also, if you're looking at this on YouTube. I really love this picture that I'm using of her next to Molly Ringwald because they have very similar smiles. It's crazy. Nice. All right. So next up on our list is John Bender, the criminal, a troublemaker whose constant abuse at home leads to him antagonizing everyone around him in order to express his unhappiness. Dallas, you're up. That's perfect. That description is perfect because I picked Nicholas Hamilton. You guys don't know who that is. No, I, I do not. You right. <laughs> Nicholas Hamilton is Henry Bowers in It and It Chapter Two. I think I see what you meant with that message that you sent. I think yesterday. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, keep going. What message did I send yesterday? You said that you accidentally cast a bunch of people from the same oh, movie. Yeah, right. But yeah, you guys haven't seen it because y'all ain't about that life. Yo, but you're right. This, you're so right. Nicholas Hamilton is like perfect at what you just described 
he is abused at home and he takes it out on the people around him. But to the point, it's a Stephen King story. So it's like, he's a legitimate psychopath. Oof. And I actually wanted to tone down John Bender because he does a lot of creepy things you could get away with in the 1980s movie, but not now. No, absolutely not. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm taking out the line, let's close the door and impregnate the prom queen. And I'm yeah. taking out the... I would too. Well, yeah. I have to, but <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> Hopefully. But yeah, while I don't want those creepy things in the movie, I want someone who could reach that level of creepy just because that's the character. And if you've seen it, you know that Nicholas Hamilton could definitely do that. The boy is terrifying. So yeah, he's my criminal. <laughs> also, he's a good actor because he's <laughs> convincing at being terrifying. Colin, who you got? Me. So my criminal bender is Amber Midthunder, mainly because I miss her and I want to see her in things. I mean, the only thing I've seen her in is Legion, but she was great in Legion and her character, Carrie, had a lot of like, I want to punch somebody in the face energy, which I feel like is what Bender needs. That's true. So like, yeah. What was her character in Legion? Describe it to me. Carrie, she was the one, she and that dude were like sharing a body and he did all the science stuff and she did all the punching stuff. Right, right. Carrie and Carrie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was an interesting thing they did. She kind of reminds me of like a version of Aubrey Plaza that I actually like. Wow. So it works. That was hardcore. How could you how could you say that? Talking about Legion with in which Aubrey Plaza goes so hard in that show. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. The disrespect. You're absolutely right. You let come out of your mouth. I you're right. I take it back. She's great. I forgot you that she owe, was also on that show. You owe Eska an apology. Yeah, I was gonna say she's also very great on Legend of Korra. Yeah. Just uh, as a as a group, we apologize, Aubrey Plaza, on behalf of Colin and his yeah. Yeah. ignorance. I wouldn't say ignorance, just his forgetfulness. <laughs> no, ignorance is uh sounds more contrite. All right, guys, that means it's my turn. <laughs> yes, it is. So continuing with this gender bending of Bender. Uh huh, Bender. I chose Tati Gabrielle. I thought about her, but I felt like I hadn't seen her in enough to justify it. Well, it's okay, because I did it anyway. Yeah, I chose Tati Gabrielle, who is most well known for Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. She plays Prudence, and she's amazing at playing, like, the bad girl archetype, which is basically what, I mean, that's what Bender is. He's the bad boy, but they chose to call him the criminal. But yeah, she's Prudence is not a criminal that I know of, but, you know, she's a bad girl, constantly causing trouble, occasionally has some... Actually, I don't think her rage issues are anywhere near this, but she's got like abandonment issues. So, you know, it works out. Um, I did initially consider having her for Allison, but then I was like, I feel like Bender is a much better place for her. And I think that would be a lot more fun, which is why I said earlier when you said the let's close the door and pregnant the prom queen or whatever. I was like, that doesn't she that can't would be physically impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she can't. But there is uh, the moment where the athlete, I believe, calls Bender the F word, which I'm not going to say on this podcast. Right. Which, first off, I probably would take out anyway. He also fights him, so maybe yeah. take that out too. We'll see. I feel like uh, Tati Gabriel would be able to take the fight. But anyway, I just thought it would add more layers if it turns out like, yeah, this person actually is gay. Is Tati gay in real life? That's a good question. I don't know. I thought that's where you were going. No, I just... Like, you'd make the character. No, I'm saying the character, yeah. I'm like, if you're adding layers to it, to that interaction, it's more than just somebody's being insulted. It's like somebody's being insulted, but it's actually the truth about who they are. True, because this movie's just a bunch of straight whites, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, making it gay a little bit. And uh, so it's Colin, apparently. Colin makes everything gay. That's that's what he's here for. It's his gay agenda. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, I am definitely taking out the sexual assault portion of this film. Oh, good. There is definitely a different way around that. There, there's a way to make that scene still work without the sexual assault. Not, yeah, you just not take that part out completely, and it works. <laughs> yeah, like you can definitely have him make some other noise. There's a lot you can do, or like even if you still want her to like attack Bender under the table. That's not, that doesn't have to be the the catalyst for her to attack him. It was a weird movie. The 80s, 80s were a weird, weird time. time. <laughs> yes. Hey. 
But yes, Tati Gabrielle is my choice for Bender. I think she would be awesome because she's just amazing. I heard her voice on the Owl House the other day and was like, that sounds... Who does she voice on the Owl House? Willow, I think is the character's name. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. I heard her voice and was like, that sounds nothing like what I'm used to. Okay. I never would have caught that. That's awesome. The girl has range. So yeah, she'd be incredible. Next up on our list is Andrew Clark, the athlete with an excessive need to receive validation from his father who has put so much pressure on him to succeed athletically. Dallas, who you got? I have Asher Angel. Of course oh, you yeah, do. Yeah, 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 I, you yeah, know what? It's yeah. weird. Him as, a, as an athlete? Would not have picked. Would not have guessed. He's a superhero, kind of. Yeah, but he was the bad boy superhero. Yeah. Let's get into that. So... I want someone who I could see standing up to the criminal, and that's Billy Batson. But also, <laughs> but also, Andrew is kind of a dick, and that's also Billy Batson. So, Asher Andrew can do all of that. We've seen him do all of that because he did all of that. And also, I don't know a lot of teenagers. <laughs> I yeah. think this is the third fan cast I've used him in. Yeah, I believe so. We really, this is unfortunate for you because, like, we have stuff like um, Percy Jackson that we're going to do down the line. It's like all teenagers. I mean, what are you going to do? Oh, those are even younger. I bet you he'll be in there. Oh, God. I bet you that they're all young, young, young. They're like 12. I don't know anyone that age. Good luck. It's going to be fun. Mm, We'll see. But yeah, Billy Batson, Nasher Angel is my athlete. Nice. Colin, it's your turn. It's me. So, my athlete is Isabella Merced, who used to be Isabella Moner and changed her name, I found out. Dora. Yeah, Dora. It's basically based on that. I think that's the only thing I've seen her in. I was trying to figure out if like she did any of her own stunts to justify her being an athlete, but then I was like, nah, whatever, it's fine. It's movie magic. There's also that. And like, she was cool in Dora. I liked her. She was fun. I liked her energy. I feel like she could bring that to the scenes that need her to be energetic and then be sad when she needs to be sad. You didn't see the two movies she did with Mark Wahlberg? No. She was in Instant Family and uh, one of the Transformers. Uh, I might have seen the Transformers one. I'm not sure, but Instant Family I didn't see. Wait, I think but anyway. Watched... Never mind. It's that movie. Transformers is terrible. But I've heard wow. Instant Family is great and Isabella is great. I think Instant Family is on Amazon Prime. Oh, hey, I'll have to get to that at some point. But yeah, she's my athlete because I could see her doing athletic things. And I liked her in the one movie I saw her in. She was dope. I almost, I was like looking for, because, you know, I was looking for actors who were teenagers because it's a high school movie. Mm-hmm. And I came across her and I was like, I don't know where to put her. So I just didn't. But you did. So that's good. Yeah. I like how we are all considering similar actors and then are like, oh, well, somebody else did it. So that's great. Yeah, it works out. All right. So I guess it's my turn. I chose Jorge Lindeberg Jr., who is most well-known for Bumblebee oh, and Spider-Man. Yeah. He's well, great. Spider-Man Homecoming. He is. He's awesome. I enjoyed his work in both Bumblebee and his small little role in Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. He's really was funny he in, the, in this movie. Was he hilarious. in the news? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's hilarious on that. And I, I just thought he was really great in Bumblebee. Like, I really enjoyed watching him act alongside Haley Steinfeld. So I think we should get to see him more. Also, I wanted somebody who was, I wanted a, a Latinx actor, but also like, this is even better because I think he's Afro Latino. So I believe so. Yes. So I was very happy about that. Also, his hair is magnificent. I want to say he's also in Love, Simon. If you haven't seen that. He is. I think yeah. he is. Yes. But I've liked him in everything that I've seen him in so far. So wishing him all the success because he's awesome. I don't have much more to say outside of that. So we're going to move on to Brian (laughs) Johnson, the brain whose constant pressure to do well academically leads to him breaking down and bringing a gun to school. I am reading that. Got that that bang on him. Yeah. Well, I'm reading in certain areas. It says that he brought a flare gun to school. And I'm like, that's not the same as a regular gun. He did bring bring a flare gun. Yeah. Oh, he brought a flare gun. Yeah. Because they ask him like, oh my God, you brought a gun. What kind of gun? He's like, oh, it was a flare gun. And then they start laughing because it's like, you were going to. What were you going to do with that? Oh, I missed, I must have missed the word flare. I remember the word gun. I do not remember the word flare. But yeah, he brought a flare gun to school so that he could commit suicide, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a choice. I Dallas. Hang on. That's a choice. 
Um, I don't know if that counts as a thing. It's a, it's everything's a thing. But I mean, it, what you mean, it is a gun, so it would still be a thing. It's still the heater. All right, <laughs> street sweeper. It's not a street sweeper. Uh, no, it's just the no. Heater. Oh, I guess because that would. Yeah. Okay. The burn. Anyway, um, Brian, <laughs> Brian the Brain, Brian the Brain Johnson. I have two Brian the Brain Johnsons. My first one is Jack Dylan Grazer. Which one is did. that? He is He's the, the other one. kid from Shazam. <laughs> and the oh, other kid he, from It. Um, I can't remember his friend's name right now. Yeah, he's but he's the friend. Either, actually. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay. The, the foster brother. Right. I, okay, this Freddy. is going to bother me. Freddy for there you. we go. Yes. Okay. But yeah, like I've seen Jack in It and Shazam, and they both lead me to believe that he would actually like absolutely nail this role as the brainy nerdy guy. And oh yeah, definitely. Really funny. And watching this movie, I think the brain was the funniest part to me because everything else was just kind of depressing. I mean, he got depressing when you're like, I don't want to kill myself because I can't pass woodshot. But aside from that, he was actually pretty funny. So I think Jack would be great for this comic relief, nerdy, white, smart kid. But also... He's also... Hmm, I was about to say, he's on that new HBO show. Yeah, I've been seeing trailers for that whenever I try to watch Lovecraft Country. Yes. <laughs> but um I don't I don't remember what that show is called. Uh, it's but. called We Are Who We Are. Yes. He looks very different. It's the blonde hair. Yeah, but like also what he's doing in the like the role looks like a very it doesn't look like it supports my argument at all for the brain. <laughs> well, that would just mean that he has range. That's good. Got to have range. My second brain is Julian Dennison. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Yes. I've so far only seen him in one role, which is Deadpool 2. But I want to see more of him because he was so good and he was so funny in that. You should watch Hunt for the Wilder People. I think you'd like it. Yeah, I know that's like kind of his breakout role, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what everybody's talking about. I might check that out. He's going to be in Godzilla vs. Kong. Nice. I'm already planning to watch that. But yeah, I think he could definitely pull off the nerdy outcast because Deadpool 2. And he played Fire Fist. And Brian has a flare gun, which shoots like, Ooh, fire there you go. type things, which is funny to me. But also, the main reason I wanted, I wanted, like, I was watching the scene where Brian gets dropped off. And I was thinking that it would make the scene more compelling if this was a person of color. Because it's kind of like the conversation we had a couple of nights ago. For, I guess for the most part, I can't speak to everyone's perspective but minority parents don't play that in terms of your grades absolutely not (laughs) and a lot of the reason is you are a person of color you have to be twice as good to be on the same level of all these white students that you're going to school with twice as good half as far exactly so i wanted to be able to work that like notion into the movie so we could have like the kid who's not white and have his parents talking like, you need to try harder. You need to pass all your classes because these white kids are, you know, basically just going to cruise by on caucasity. And you can't do that. Dallas, me and you looking for the layers that we can add to this movie. Yes. That will never be remade. All right, Shrek, probably. calm down. I mean, it'll probably be remade. Everything gets remade. I'm surprised. I mean, it's it. already been remade through like almost every television show that has teenagers that you can possibly imagine. So they don't need to remake the movie. That's fair. I mean, Power Rangers is almost a Breakfast Club remake. That's fair. There's a detention scene. I almost got the Red Ranger to be uh, the athlete. Decker. Be- yeah. Is that how you say his name? I think it's Decker Montgomery. Man, I've never. I've Dacry, Dacry. I don't know. But he's because, not a beverage. <laughs> I don't, look, man, I don't know how people be naming their kids. But because of the scene, when he slaps the hell out of that bully. <laughs> Like, I love that scene, and it's amazing. And I wish I could have the athlete do that to the criminal, but that actor is like thirty five or something crazy, so I didn't put him in there. He's not actually thirty five. I'm just exaggerating. I was about to say I'm pretty sure he's in his late twenties, but he's definitely not in his thirties. Yeah, he's he's too old for this. Moving on, Colin to me. So brain person brain, my brain is Leo Lewis who oh. I think is probably most notable for the half of it. because that She's came out fantastic. She is. And that character feels very much like the brain. Like, I just, I feel like she could absolutely rock that. She was and amazing she's in that movie. That she is. It works. It really works. 
Dallas, where the fuck ah. were you for that? Sorry, I muted my mic because I was eating, so I didn't want to make noise in the I mic. I can't believe you. <laughs> anyway, she's great, and I think she could absolutely nail this character, so I cast her. Good choice, good choice. Thank you. Thank you. My next choice for this is Anthony Turple. I think he's also the only white actor I have on this list. But Anthony Turple, who is most well known for Love, Victor. He plays a character that is super adorable. I was talking about him on our last quarantine watch for television. Um, But his character is very quirky and he's basically the nerd type of character. Felix. Felix is basically the nerd, but he's not quite this type of nerd, but I feel like Anthony could really pull this off. Anthony Michael Hall had like this very non-threatening, very not intimidating look about him as Brian. And I feel like Anthony also kind of has that look when he's on Love, Love, Victor. I don't know outside of the show, but on Love, Victor, he comes off as very like non-threatening. And I feel like that really works for, for the character. So, yeah, Anthony Turple, who I love on Love, Victor. All right. Shout out Anthony Turple. Next up on our list and the final character on our list, actually, because, you know, there's only five people in the Breakfast Club, is Allison Reynolds, the basket case, a girl who's starved for attention and will do or say anything to get it because she's deprived of it at home. Dallas, who you got? My basket case is Willow Smith. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting choice. See, I was wondering about that, but I didn't know if I'd ever seen her act. I have not seen her act much. She actually doesn't do a whole lot of acting, but I know I have seen her act. So I just latched onto that and was like, she's an actress. But it's more just about her personality in real life. Like, I wouldn't call her a basket case by any means, but she and her brother have this reputation of like eccentricity that I think would translate very well to the role. Like, I don't think, I'm pretty sure my version of The Breakfast Club is a lot more reined in. Like the criminals not talking about raping people and pulling out knives and the <laughs> basket case isn't just like doing everything that she does. But I think Willow could just bring her own uniqueness to the role. And I think it would translate well to the character. It's a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Colin. All right. My basket case is Zendaya. Mainly based on everything she's ever done. Like, but also like yeah. Spider-Man. Euphoria. There's, there's, that's a vibe. I watched an episode of Euphoria. I don't remember it very well. But she like... has far more of that vibe on Euphoria. Mm. <laughs> but that could be because she's a drug addict. Maybe. I mean, be like that. sometimes it do. But like, yeah, she has that vibe. And I just, I keep thinking about her in Spider-Man. And I'm like, yeah, that works. You just do that, but make it weirder. And you're good. Isn't it, like there are a lot of actors that I considered but I was trying to keep myself to actors who are like as young as possible. And Zendaya would definitely have been my basket case if I wasn't doing that. I wanted to get people who were either teenagers or they have been teenagers in the last couple of years. So I went with Willow, but Zendaya would have been my basket case if she was younger. Yeah. Zendaya has got a lot of range too. I say as somebody who has been watching quite a bit of Casey undercover recently, because my brother has been watching it on Disney plus. Nice. All right, so I have two choices for Allison. The first one I'm going to mention is Lana Condor, who is most well-known for To All the Boys I've Loved Before and Deadly Class for me. She's also Jubilee. She's also, yeah, yeah barely, <laughs> but yes. Yes, she is. I She's just got great range. Just between the two roles that I mentioned, she, like... I've talked about it before. Lara Jean is so completely different from, from Saya. Saya is, like, a super just hardened badass assassin ninja type of girl and Lara Jean is just so like kind of preppy and girly and total opposite end of the spectrum of that I've never seen her play any character like a basket case in this situation but I would love to see Lana Condor do it because I think she would be phenomenal at it I think that Lana Condor could literally do any role she set her mind to the only concern that I have is there is a tweet going around on Twitter about people of color who are constantly put into roles where they are like silent for most of them, especially Asian actors and actresses. Yeah, I saw that. And let, yes, Colin sent it to us and I, I saw it before that. And it's something that I've been aware of for a while and it is kind of annoying. So I would hate to like continue to push that stereotype. I mean, you could just make her say more things and just like, she just does has to say things that don't make sense. 
She has to be a different type of basket, a more talkative basket case is what you're saying. Uh, Yeah, that's a good point. You could just do that. But whatever, I feel like whatever material given Lana Condor would pull it off. But she wasn't the first person that I had in mind. I initially had a different actor in mind for the role until I realized that the athlete and the basket case get together because I had completely forgotten that aspect in the movie. But if I wanted to make it completely gay, then I would choose Arya Shagasimi who is most well-known for Legacies. He's an Iranian-American actor. He is so good on Legacies. Even though I'm not like a huge fan of his character, I do think that he does a great job playing this character. He's also got like these really, like I don't know if he's wearing makeup or if he just naturally just has dark rimmed eyes, but like he looks kind of like how Allison purposefully puts her makeup on naturally, I think. So... He just already aesthetically looks like he fits the role. And I think he would make a great basket case. I think he could pull off the outsider pariah type of thing, especially because his character on Legacies is already an outsider pariah type of person, except he's just not eccentric like that. So I would like to see if Arya could pull off that ex- uh, the eccentricities. But those are all the characters we have on our list today, guys. I do have bonus castings. I don't know if you guys do. I mean, I have I a director not. and a writer, but no. What? That's true. Actually, yes, I do have a bonus cast. Why not? What What do you have, Dallas? Um, what's the vice principal's name? Vice um, principal. Is principal. he the vice principal? I thought he was just the principal principal. I think he's listed as like assistant principal on Wikipedia. Whatever. Richard Vernon is his name. Yes. Assistant principal white man. I have Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, yeah. Okay. He does kind of, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> he kind of looks like him. And Ben Mendelsohn is such a great actor. And he's really menacing when he wants to be. And the whole time I was watching the movie, I was just thinking like, man, Ben Mendelsohn would play the hell out of this role. <laughs> he so would, that. He, he would be really funny. Cool. I So I also did the bonus casting for the principal, vice principal, whatever the hell he is. He works there. <laughs> <laughs> and I chose Charles Shaughnessy, who I know him most from The Nanny and The Magicians. Uh, but he is amazing. Just a fantastic actor. And I don't know why I was just like, yeah, I can see him being the principal. I just can. He would be really good. And then I also cast Carl, who is the janitor at the school. Nice. And I thought it would be cool if you just, if you got Emilia Estevez or Judd Nelson or Anthony Michael Hall to come back and play the janitor. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. It'd yeah, be like be... on uh, on Dope when they got Rick Famuyiwa, who I'm just going to say it now. He's my director and writer for this movie. Yeah, of course he is. Wow, that's yeah. like the second one in like a month. Yeah, like I, I think our last fan cast was I made it blacker and made him the director of it. Yeah. Because he made my he made Dope, which is like my favorite coming of age movie that doesn't have a Spider-Man in it. But what I was saying is that in the movie The Wood, he has a school bully named Stacy beat up the protagonist. And in Dope, that character is now a security guard at the high school. <laughs> but also Dallas Dope is a coming of age movie with Spider-Man in it <gasps> you're right <laughs> wow that's crazy I didn't even think about that ta-da ta-da but yeah I like that idea also yeah I I had a similar idea with um kind of like uh, Tessa Thompson coming back to Dear White People the series yeah that'd be cool which I like referencing a lot uh, but Dallas that you said sense. Rick Famuyiwa would be your director and writer yeah because I don't know how much more we need to see about it, say about him because we've talked about him so often recently. Yeah, it was just, he made dope. And I love that movie so much. And when I think of like coming of age high school movies, that's my favorite probably. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Rain Gun, for the request because I think it was a really awesome one for us to do. I agree with that because I had never seen this movie and now I have. So shout out to Rain Gun for that. And... Shout out to Crown Digital, Brandon and Aya for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But you are listening on YouTube because you follow directions. And Demi put all our stuff there. So thank you, Demi, for that. Colin, thank you for mixing it up as you always do. I think you gender been more characters in fan cast than any of us. I try. Even, yeah, even Demi. Because Demi, Demi like be going I, for I, it. I looked at this movie and I said, what are my problems with this movie? And I really came to most of them are men. So most problems are men. In, in Actually, that's in general, not just this fucking movie. But anyway, 
They don't need to be here. Did you leave any dudes in the movie? I don't remember. Uh, in my fan cast, no. I was gonna say I don't think you didn't. No, no I didn't. I just realized that. Week. Oh, that's crazy! I didn't even notice that. That's crazy. That's interesting. Anyway. Crazy. Speaking of which, there is kind of a sex education episode, which kind of has its own all lady breakfast club thing going for it too. Nice. Now that, that makes sense. Now that we've noticed that, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize that you had gender bent all of them. I think me and you gender bent almost the same number of people for this one. We didn't gender bent all of them. He gender bent. He gender bent three of them. I gender bent right. two of them. Right. Yes. Nice. Back to you, audience. If you want to let us know your thoughts on our picks or share your own picks, you can find us on the medias. On Twitter, y'all underscore different. Instagram and Tumblr, Creative Differences Podcast. And Facebook, search for Creative Differences. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram if you just want to talk about how weird the 80s were and how lucky we are to not be from that time. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at a king named Simba. You can find me on Twitter at Duck McGuck. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dreamy Films. Dreamy is spelled D-R-E-E-M-I. Thanks again for joining us, guys. And you can find Gabby on Twitter at Pillow Princess. It's been different. Bye. <laughs> Not too bad.